I've done lists about my favorite Inazuma 11 players of all time. I've done lists about my least favorite. I've done lists about the most forgettable. But I've never done lists about the most underrated players. What are the players that everyone else hates, or at least seems to hate, or that no one gives any love to, who I really, really like? So today we're doing just that my top 10 underrated Inazuma 11 players. I want to use all these players in Victory Road. Question. Who do you think is the captain of All Pine Go? Mm, see, you just made the rookie mistake because you probably just said Nord Snow. When actually, it's Wolf White. Everyone seems to forget about him. I never see anyone talking about him. But he is such a cool design. His dub name is absolutely fantastic. And I really, really like his special move. I mean, come on, it's Wolf White. His name is literally Wolf White. That's such a sick name for an All Pine character. So here's to you, lad. Here's to you actually getting acknowledged for once. When we take a look at Inazuma Japan, I feel like there are certain players who go completely under the radar. And for me, the one who goes under the radar the most is Thor Stoutberg. Nobody talks about this guy, yet I think he's really cool. He's actually introduced in the Inazuma 11 2 anime, because he's a post-game character in 2, like a secret character that you can unlock in the lighthouse or whatever. And he's cool then. He's a striker for some reason, although he gets moved to midfield, technically defender, in Inazuma 11 3, because let's be honest, who is using this man in midfield? But I just think he's so cool. He's got such a cool design. I love his personality, his backstory. In the anime, he gets involved with Brazil. I just think he's got a ton of cool things going for him. I really, really like him. I mean, come on. He is technically there with Austin and Archer as a new character who gets thrown into Inazuma Japan. And I just think that's so bloody cool. Number eight is the first Galaxy character on the list. Because let's be honest, nobody gives Earth-11 enough credit unless your name is Falco or Terry. And it's Buddy Fury. I just adore Buddy's whole angry mode. Like where he gets all ragey and his hair goes all cool and his eyes... Rah, and he gets all like... Rah. I can't think of any better way to describe it. I just think he's the coolest, most tough. He could beat me up at any second. But like... Sick. Well done, mate. That kind of energy. And I love Brutal Heather. It's simple, but it's effective. Another player who I think... His whole time in the spotlight goes under the radar from what I see. I could see people saying this guy isn't underrated, but I'm going to put him here anyway. Vladimir Blade. I adore his time in Chronostones when he joins the team as his alternate universe self. I just think it's fantastic. I just love the way that we get to use the injured player who isn't injured now because of multiverse shenanigans, time travel shenanigans. That to me is peak time travel storytelling. He's so cool. He's so powerful. I just wish we got to use him for longer. And I just generally love Vladimir even when he isn't playing football. Just in Go 1, I think he's awesome. So yeah, shout out to Vladimir. Wish you got more screen time. Number six is another Go 1 player who I think goes insanely under the radar when people look at their favorite Go 1 players. And I think this is purely as a result of Quentin Sinquidai, Sanct Qu Quent of Quentin and Resistance Japan. And that is Alessandro Il Grande. Is that how you pronounce his name? I, I'm going to assume it is. I wish this guy was either in Inazuma Japan or in Resistance Japan, because I just love his whole, I hope love is all is like his Keshin. I think that's really cool. I love his whole design. I love his whole demeanor. I just love the fact that he seems like this really authoritative, hardcore army figure as a goalkeeper. I love hit. I just, I, yeah, I just love him. I stand by that if they did go Galaxy as a proper FFI season, that Il Grand should have been on Inazuma Japan and he should have been the main goalkeeper. Number five is a player that I love all because of one anime episode, and that is Bobby Shearer. I think Bobby's Secret, or whatever the hell it's called, is the best episode of season one of the anime, and I absolutely adore Bobby in it, and it gave me a brand new appreciation for this really cool defender. I don't think people give him anywhere near enough love. I mean, when you think about like the, the OG Raimon team, you typically think about Raimon 2. Everyone loves Sean. Everyone loves Axel. Everyone loves Eric. Everyone loves Jude. Everyone loves Mark. Nobody gives enough appreciation to my consistent man, Bobby. I mean, look at the anime. Look at season one. Look at that match against Royal where he throws his face into a ball. Come on. That's my prince. Also, Volcano Cut is a very cool move. Number four is another Galaxy player. 
Frank Foreman. This guy is fantastic. I'm a huge sucker for this whole turning other sports into, like, you know, turning players from other sports into football players thing. The Galaxy is going for it. And Frank Foreman becoming a football player from being a boxer, I just adore. And I love his moves that um, become as a result of that. I love everything about Frank. I love his design. I just, I just adore him. Number three is a duo. It's Mark and Dylan. When you think about the main opponents in Inazuma 11-3, I think you think about Helio, you think about Fidio, you think about Edgar. You do not think about Mark and Dylan, and you should, because come on, Unicorn Boost, brilliant move. Grand Fenra, brilliant move. Their match is kind of overshadowed by Eric and his whole plotline, and fair enough. But Mark and Dylan, for me, are just insanely cool American guys, and I love them, and I wish they got more credit, and yeah. Just everything about them. Yeah. This is easily the most unpopular pick on the list. But Scotty Banyan is my second most underrated player in Inazuma 11 history. Bro, that story of Scotty Banyan's mother abandoning him genuinely makes me cry. I think it might be the saddest anime moment in Inazuma 11. And I absolutely adore it. Not just because I like watching Scotty Banyan's mum abandon him, but because I just think it's such an emotional moment, which in Zoom 11 doesn't do well very often. But bro, it teared me up. It's that image of Scotty with his little teddy bear. It does me in. One of the saddest things to me is kids with teddy bears being sad. And oh my god, this ruins me. So yeah, Scotty is absolutely underrated, deserves so much more love. Come on, he was a sad child once upon a time. How are you going to do him dirty like that? And number one, for me, it's a bit of a cop-out, but it is the entirety of the original Rhyme on Eleven, excluding the obvious. So excluding Axel, Kevin, Mark, Nathan, the obvious players. I'm talking Jim. I'm talking Todd, Timmy, Sam, Max, Steve. I'm talking those players. Obviously, anyone who watches my live streams know that Max has a very special place in my heart. I love Steve anyway. I think Jim's awesome. Todd is a gift from God. Timmy is fantastic. Sam is a brilliant midfielder in Inazuma 11-1. I just adore these characters. I think they're so charming, so likable. They're perfect underdogs. People do not give them enough credit just because they didn't have some really cool flashy move. So yeah, there you go. That is my top 10 underrated Inazuma 11 players. But I really want to know who your guys are. So make sure you comment down below with your underrated players. And make sure you like the video and subscribe for more Inazuma 11 content. Not only do we have videos coming out basically every day, but we also stream basically every day. So make sure you subscribe so you see all of that as soon as it happens. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.